All right. First and foremost, I want to wish everyone a happy Halloween. Um, I know it's coming up here in just a couple of weeks, and but I am ready to start crafting for the holidays. I always get started in November, and I craft up till about the second week of December, and then I'm ready for Valentine. So that's basically the way it goes. <laughs> um, tonight, um, <clears throat> excuse me, tonight we're going to, I'm going to create uh, an altered wine cork necklace. And I'm going to show you step by step on how to do that. Um, I went to this fabulous site called Top Hatter Auctions. And I got like 60 of these beautiful wine corks. And I was thinking, okay, what can I do with these? A lot of people make wreaths. They make uh, just different things um, and stuff. And I thought, well, I want to make a necklace. And uh, <clears throat> so this is my way of doing it. And I hope that it inspires you to create with wine corks more. Um, I will be giving away some of these wine corks uh, to a couple of lucky viewers. And so that you can create some yourself and have fun with them. Okay? So if y'all are all ready, I am going to get started. Now, the, um, I just took a regular, this is a wine cork. Um, this one happens to be blank. Um, it's not like the other wine corks. As you can see, wine corks come in different sizes and different lengths. Some of them have... Uh, of course the company stamping on it um, you are more than welcome to use that design in anything that you do or if you have the plain one like this um, you definitely have more room to alter it and do whatever it is you're wanting to do to it so that's what I'm going to use I'm going to use this plain one now in light of magic of uh, live show TV here um, I went ahead and I used just regular acrylic paint, just acrylic white paint, and I painted it white, okay? But what I want to do <clears throat> is this is the Tim Holtz um, <clears throat> bottles here. They're called cork vials. And, of course, they come in several, several different sizes, but what's fabulous is that he, in his packaging, he has three of the little ones here. And that's the size we're going to use tonight, is the little bitty one. And, um, <clears throat> our first objective is, is we're going to have to, um, make sure, we're uh, going to have to hollow out part of this cork to fit the vowel inside of the the cork because that's what I want it to do. I want it to inlay inside um, of the cork here. So, in again, in light of TV, I have already done that. Now, I will show you how I, I did this. As you can see, I hollowed it out and my bottle will fit right in there like that. And that's what I want to accomplish here okay so how I did that real simple is I laid my cork down and I laid the bottle down like this and I made a I made a mark right here at the bottom of the bottle and of course here at the top and then I made one on each side like this and what this is, it just basically gives me registration marks. And I use an X-Acto knife. Uh, you can use your, uh, you know, your little cutter, whatever it is. Please be very careful when you do this um, because it'll roll and everything. But just take patience. And what you're going to do is you're just going to core it out. Okay, you're just going to cut it out like I did here. And you can clean it up on the sides. Make sure your sides are, are clean and smooth. 
along with the tops and the bottoms. The inside here that is rough, that's not going to be seen because your bottle is going to hide it. But in to ensure a good placement, you want to make sure that these sides are smooth um, so that um, your bottle will sit in there like that. Okay. Um, do you have any questions so far? I'm sure. No, nobody has any questions. Okay. So, now, now that my bottle is, I've got it where I want to go. Now, there are several options that you can do to decorate this, but we're going to decorate it. This is the way I want to decorate it. Now, these little pieces here were created with Martha Stewart's um, little um, silicone molds. And this one happens to be the, um, she has several, she has like the picture frames and whatever, but these happen to fit perfectly at the top of the um, cork. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to adhere these to the top of my uh, cork here. And also, I'm going to adhere one at the bottom. What this does is just kind of gives it some um, texture and it also gives it some decoration. It kind of finishes off the top and bottom. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to use some hot glue. To do that. Alright. It doesn't take much hot glue. So kind of just lay it on there. And press down. like that okay and you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom oh my nose is itching Okay, now I'm going to take some acrylic paint and I'm going to paint right over all of that so that I can hide any imperfections that the hot glue left and also it kind of blends in the, um, the piece here and that was made with polymer clay. Um, these are polymer clay pieces. Okay. I'm just going to paint right over it. Hey, Lynn. All right. And I'm just going to make sure that my edges are painted very well along the front here. Okay. All right, so there I have the vessel for my bottle. Now, while this is drying, we're gonna work on the bottle. Now, you can do several things with this bottle. And I had put up a product list or a little class list and 
knowing me, as everybody knows, I have misplaced my uh, white rub on that I wanted to use. So I am going to have to use something else. Oh, nope. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Thank goodness. Okay. This is some white rub-ons that I have. Um, so, and if you're like me, messy, I'm going to leave, clean this off. Make sure your bottle is clean. I'm not rolling around in paint. Okay. And again, these are the Tim Holtz bottles. Okay. All right. Now, what I want to accomplish here, and I've done it before, but it is very tedious. You want to lay your bottle onto a, a uh, paper towel so that it will not roll because with rub-ons you have to rub this image onto your bottle and I'm just going to choose um, an abstract design here that I have nothing uh, particular you can use um, any rub-on uh, because rub-ons are great on glass okay and I'm only going to do the front of my bottle because, again, the um, the rest of the bottle is going to be hidden inside your, I don't know if you can see me doing this. It's going to be hidden inside that vessel, okay? And, of course, if it moves which it's liable to just replace it and hold on for dear life what this does is it just dresses up your little bottles your little vials and this is something uh, a new trick you can do for future uh, products I mean future projects using Tim Holtz little cork vials okay there we go now it's on there can you see can you see that how pretty is that that's too pretty now I want to add um, <laughs> I'm gonna add a little touch of bling to my bottle and I'm going to do that with some want to scrap um, adhesive rhinestone shape want to scraps products is absolutely awesome um, I'm very fortunate to design for them, so I have some of my own designs floating around over there, and I love their bling. So I'm just going to use um, the little teardrop shape here in uh, on the bottle. And I'm just going to lift it off and place it right down there. Now see, isn't that pretty? That just gives it some pizzazz, as you would call it. Okay? Now, inside your bottle, um, you can do several things. You can uh, write... Um, on a little piece of paper, a wish or a um, a prayer, or you can fill it with glitter. 
that you can do several things. But what I want to do is I want to put a little prayer in mine. And I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper I have here. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sandy's here and you're here, Lynn. And I don't know who the guests are because they're not signed in. I wish they were. Okay, so now the key thing here is we've got to measure, you know, kind of give yourself a registration mark here of how tall your little bottle is. So I'm just going to give myself a little registration mark right there. And I'm going to cut a little sliver. And I wanted it with the blue because... I want to kind of bring some blue and silvers into this project, okay? But I want to write my little prayer. I'm going to write it in gold. My little prayer is simple. It says, may God protect me and my family and always guide us to the light. Um, so that's my little prayer I want to put in there. I wrote it in gold. And now what I want to do is I'm going to start rolling it. And I would use like a piercing tool or um, a pencil to to get it to roll to get your roll going okay just kind of do that now you gotta uncork your bottle here Now I'm going to roll it up really tight again so I can slip it through the opening of the bottle. Alright. Push it down in there. And there my prayer is sealed. As you can see. You shake it a little bit to open the paper to fill the bottle if you want, like that. So I have my prayer in there. And now my uh, cork here should be dry. Um, if you just come into the show, you this show is recorded and it shows you how um, I told you how you got to this step here. And what I used. Now, in my little uh, repertoire here, these are some vintage keys that Tottered Angels had a couple of years ago before they um, were bought out. And um, you can use any key, I mean, you know, and these just happen to be silver. And what we're going to do with this particular key, if you have these keys at home, this is what you're going to do. You're going to get you some good snippers here. You hear my family in the background. And you're going to snip off that little... Did you snow me? Huh? What would you say? I said I hear my family in the background. Uh -oh. Okay, no, you're not going to snip that off. I'm sorry. So, I'm going to use that other one. Now, what we're going to do very carefully is we're going to we're going to snip this key in half. 
and I might have to get my husband to help me. Please be careful when you do this. And you're going to snip your key in half. It takes a little coaxing, but it can be done because I've done it before. Okay. Almost got it. This takes a little elbow grease. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me get another tool. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Now these are a little bit, there we go, now, all right, now what you're going to do is you're just going to get a little sander and you're going to sand those edges. all the metal shavings here. Alright, now what I want to do is I want to take my piercing tool and I want to kind of bore a hole at the top here Okay, so that I can insert that in there. And as you can see, I did not go all the way through here. You have to be very aware of that. I didn't go all the way through here. So you have so when you bore the hole, when you put your key at the top, do not go all the way through because your bottle will not fit. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to take this out and I'm going to put just a dab of hot glue at the bottom. Well, is it going to come out? Lock it in. I like the hot glue gun, but then I don't. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom on my hot glue gun. Is I have one of those cordless things. And if you don't put it back on its base, it will not work. I don't know. 
I like the cordless thing, but I think it's becoming more of a headache than anything. And then we're going to put this bottom piece at the bottom. So you're going to have, it's going to look like the key is went through the piece like that. Okay. So. See if I can get to work now. Ugh. Well, the hot glue gun's not working at the moment. Okay. So I'm going to put this in here and show you what it's going to start to look like. Then we're going to set our bottle in there. I mean of course you're going to glue your bottle in there too. As you can see there. Okay. So what do you think so far? You have any questions so far? Okay. I guess not. Okay. We'll move on. Now, you're welcome to add, like, uh, do some uh, stamping work onto your, this will be a good time to do that, and I'm going to take advantage of doing that right now. I'm going to put a little bit of blue and some silver. Okay. Now I'm just going to touch the edges to kind of give it some, uh, you know, character. Just dabbing the edges here. I'm going to do the top to kind of bring it out a little bit. I'm also going to add a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to dab this. This is Donna Salazar's fabulous mixed media inks. Work very well with projects like this. And their blendability, oh my goodness. So that's why I'm just using a paper towel. And I'm just going to dab some of this um, denim color and I just want to add it to the front and along the edges here and I'm just going to brush it on kind of like that. And then I'm going to blend. And as you can see, the more you blend, if you want, you can take a, this the old emery board and just kind of bring back the brown uh, cork underneath to kind of give it some uh, character there as well like it's worn Here. Y'all see that look? Can y'all see that? The way the, the brown is coming out. Like that. Alright. 
kind of give you a different Okay, now. Next, we're going to install the top part of the key. And my glue gun should be working now. Yep, there it goes. Okay, rather quickly. And make sure that your key is straight when you stick it in there, like that. Okay. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. So that's what it looks like now. We installed the key. Now we're going to put our bottle into its little resting place. And you know, you can do a lot of things. You can add something around the rim, which I think I might. Hmm. What, 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 what? What am I going to do? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of add a little something. I think I might add some rhinestones. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the rhinestone issue. Um, this is Donna Salazar's uh, Build Your Own Bling. Um, it's exclusive at once a scrap. And I like it because, of course, you can take it and build your own bling. Okay, so I'm just going to use this little strip here. Okay. It's not going to take much, so... There we go. I'm just going to wrap it around the neck of the cork bottle here. Perfecto. There we go. Cute, cute. Okay. got to hand it to Donna Salazar. She's one smart lady. Okay, now, I'm going to install, put this in here with hot glue. Because I know hot glue will stick. And you're going to go all the way up with your hot glue. And... You're going to push it down in there. Like so. Okay. There you go. It's in there. Right. Now, I also told you you need to get some craft wire. Um, this is 20 gauge. Standard craft wire. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is in a bigger package than it looks on the site. It's it's very big. Um, they're very generous with their bling, and it's um, it's very very good quality, and it's very very uh, affordable. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pull out some craft wire here. Now, now what I want to do is I'm going to create a spiral on one end, okay, and I just do this by wrapping it around like that. Now, I know there's probably easier ways for everybody to create spirals, but this is Miss Angie's way, and I'm sure it's the hard way. So, I'm going to uncoil that and just kind of play with it for a moment. I can work with it here. So do y'all have any questions so far, Lynn? Do you have any questions or anything like that? Or I'm just going to take this off start over. It's kind of create a funky little spiral here. Okay. Now, Liam, um, this would be an awesome project to put, um, you know, your prayers and stuff in a vial and carry it with you. All right, now, now I've got my little spiral going here. I want to kind of wrap, kind of encase my jar here. It's kind of symbolic that I'm capturing my prayer. And now I want to start another spiral and just Hold it down in there, kind of like that. And this is the fun part. You can manipulate and move the wire around. Kind of interlock it like that. Kind of like that. Now I bound my prayer to the bottle. 
What I love about art and creating is everything is symbolic. Everything has a meaning. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be you. And what you want to capture. What is it that you're wanting to... Tell the world, you know, show the world. Okay. So there you go. It's loosely on there, like that. I like that. Now, I told you you needed some Tim Holtz um, angel wings. Okay. And what we're going to do, my friends is we're going to make a little in, uh, incision now you can wait to put your wire on there but I can work around it because okay no and you're going to have to snip off that little loop there And my necklace here is going to have angel wings. And I'm going to create, take your X-Acto knife, hey Michelle, take your X-Acto knife. And you're going to pierce an area. Okay. You're going to have to get a little tough with your. Now that you created that, now you're going to put some hot glue on the edge here. And you're going to put it right in there. Now, if you don't want to use Tim Holtz metal wings, um, I designed these for want to scrap. This is one of my designs. Um, as you can see, you get three different shapes of angel wings. These are chipboard. Um, you can paint these any way you want. You can um, do a lot of things, and you can also use these on your necklace if you would like these. Okay. Now we've got to do the other side. You're going to kind of move your wire around. And you're going to create an incision. There, like that. What I like about corkscrews is they're very forgiving. I'm going to re-glue that. Now, I, thunk, I thought about this in my head, and I'm hoping everything seems to be going very well for me, and I'm hoping it stays that way. All right. 
now my prayer has wings. So that's what it looks like now. Yeah, I like the wings. So now you can go back. And what I'm going to do is twist and play with my wire here. Kind of crank it in areas like that. If you have any glue that seeped out, you just want to take your exacto knife and kind of clean it up here. There you go. Do the same on this side. And go back to your brush when you painted it. And you're going to do a little bit of touch up just along the edges. Now, I'm just gonna do one of the edges here. I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Like that. Alright. So that's what that looks like so far. Now, of course, anybody that's been following me for a while knows that I love bling. And I went to uh, Joanne's today. And I picked up some jump rings. These are silver jump rings. And I also picked up a variety of beads. Um, Joann's had their beads at 50% off today. Um, this is a bead collection um, that come in a little bag. And I have the label here. It is called, um, that's the wrong label. Where did it go? Uh, they're just they're by Jesse James. Um, they're called Mama. What were they called? Creative. Creative designs. Creative designs or creative elements. Anyway, you got a little bag of uh, assorted beads, and the ones that I got, I will post them on my blog. Which is at um, www.angelaholtdesigns.com, and uh, they the color that I picked out was called cosmic, and I'm gonna create a dangle. And these are all of the beautiful beads that come with it um, that I'm picking out here. As you can see, there's crystals and silver I thought it would be very very complimentary to um, this necklace and I'm picking them all out right now so that I know what I have to play with and um, Lynn is a uh, dangle creator I've been trying to get her to create some dangles and give me some pointers on what to use. Um, I had also purchased some eye hooks. Um, I hope these are, you know, to help create what I want to create here. 
so I'm going to create a dangle. I'm going to bead um, some of these onto an eye hook here. And just play around with them. I don't know if, nah. I think I might. Do a, a silver, definitely a silver piece, maybe a square there, and then end it with a silver piece. Oh, I wish you did too because I would love, 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 love to see what you had going on, girlfriend. All right. I'm going to snip this off here. I'm just getting this over. I'm probably doing this wrong, but this is the way I'm working it right now. All right. So now I have that bottom piece there. 